Hi there, this is Sean, the Honest Book Reviewer. In this video we're looking at the shortlist for Best Debut Fiction in the Indie Book Awards for 2023. I've read all four books. I will talk about each book briefly in this video, but I'm not going to give my rating of each book, but I'll mention what I think is my favourite, what I want to win. But first, what is the Indie Book Awards? It's an Australian award. It's for books published in the previous calendar year, and the books must be authored and illustrated by Australian citizens or residents. It's different to other book awards. The original list of books are selected by independent bookstore owners in Australia. Each November, booksellers nominate their bookshop's favourite titles for the calendar year. There are six categories. Fiction, non-fiction, debut fiction, illustrated non-fiction, children's and young adult. There's no information on how the shortlist is selected from the long list, but there's information on then who chooses the winning book out of the four books in the shortlist for each category. This is what happens. A panel made up of four independent booksellers, members of Leading Edge Books, and one Leading Edge Book Support Office staff will read all shortlisted titles and choose what they consider the highest quality title in each category. So from that, this is where it becomes like other book awards. So the very start of the process is different, with the long list being compiled from all nominations from independent booksellers throughout Australia. But that short list, I'm not sure how that's selected. And then the winning book at each short list just feels like every other book award around the world. We have a panel who decides that. Then there's one final award, and it's the book of the year and that's selected by the booksellers. The booksellers get to choose the winning book, and the books they choose from are the books that win in each category from the short list. So basically, booksellers get to choose the book of the year, but their choices are limited to who this panel decides is the winning book in each category. So it's a mixture of things, I think, in this book award. There's things going on that seem like other book awards with panels, and then there's other things that are selected by a wider audience. In some ways it feels a bit different, in some ways it feels the same. But to get to that original list of long list books in each category, that's where it differs, I think, to other book awards. Okay, so let's look at the short list for this award. The first book is Son of Sin by Omar Sakar. This was also nominated for the Miles Franklin Award in 2022. It made the long list of that award, not the short list. So it's interesting it's made the short list in this award. When I read this, it wasn't the strongest book for me. I related to some of the characters, but not all of them. It seemed a little bit hit and miss for me, this story. It's got a great concept, and it does explore some interesting things. It explores the themes of um, different cultures living in Australia as well. And it explores identity. It explores honesty, I guess, self in these cultures and how comfortable people are being themselves. So it has some important themes in the book. It just wasn't the strongest story for me. Haley Scrivener, Dirt Town. Now this is a mystery. The strength of this book is in some of the characters. Some of the characters are brilliant. And there's one character, Ronnie, who sticks in my mind so much. One of the things that stick in my mind about Ronnie is just how precocious she is, how determined, just her drive. And also, she loves llamas. And I learnt things about llamas in this book because of this character. And also, I find myself now wondering about llamas. I want to learn more about llamas. So, if nothing else, this book has made me want to know more about llamas. But the setting of this story, the way the author describes the setting, to just to details like exterior of buildings, interior of buildings, how that relates to people, how it relates to their, how, they're, how they're living, how they think about themselves even, is also well done. I do like this book. It's a great mystery. It relies a bit heavily, I think, on exposure of secrets. Sometimes these secrets aren't related to the mystery. I think that's a bit of a flaw in the story, but it is an impactful story. It is well told. Tracy Lien, All That's Left Unsaid. This is also a mystery, but a different type of mystery. The mystery is important, of course. It's a mystery about who killed 
someone's son and brother and a very brutal, very violent death. But it focuses so much on Vietnamese society in Australia. Importantly, how people who are displaced from their original homes to another country, how they're coping, how they react to living in a new country, what they expect from their children in a new country, how they impress upon their children, their fears, their attitudes, their thoughts about their new society, and also about their past, and how their children think about that, the pressures, and their new home, or their home they're born into, basically. So it's very interesting because it has all that going on in the story as well. It's a very traumatic book, but a very powerful book. It's not powerful because of the language used, but powerful because how the author gives us introspection and dialogue, how the author uses that to convey messages, themes, imagery even, in the book. And I did find it very powerful. I thought it was a very, very strong book. I thought for a debut book, it is just a very, very well-written, well-constructed story. The last is Wake by Shelley Burr. Now, this is my favourite from all the four on the short list. It was a very, very tough decision to choose between this one and All That's Left Unsaid by Tracy Lien. But for me, Wake by Shelley Burr is just a little bit ahead of the other books in the list. I enjoyed this book a lot. Everything about it. I enjoyed every character. I enjoyed the setting. I enjoyed the mystery. The mystery is so well constructed in this book. I enjoyed the twists and turns, and I enjoyed the fact that some of those twists and turns happen throughout the story. They're not all pushed to the end. I'm getting a bit tired of books that push all the twists at the end. I find it lazy writing. I find writers who can control the story better will put twists and turns all throughout the book. And that's my preferred option in reading a thriller or a mystery, to have twists all through the book. But for a debut book, this is brilliant. It's so well constructed, it's so well thought out, it just feels like the author is a natural. It feels like the author's just natural at writing, at constructing a great plot. And I'm looking forward to what this author does in the future. So there you have all the books on the short list. And as I said, I'm not going to give the ratings of the books in this video. If you want to know more about the books, you can check out the longer videos for each book that I have on my channel. I'll put the links down below in the comments. So check that out if you're interested. On my channel, I have books from all different genres. If you're interested in books in general, check out my channel and subscribe. I'm sure you'll find something you like.